My name is Manfred Helber and I'm a Microsoft Most Valuable Professional in the category Cloud and Data Center. In this module, we will talk about how to license Azure Stack HCI and workloads on Azure Stack HCI. When we look at what we have learned in our previous modules, then the Azure Stack HCI infrastructure is an operating system installed on your on-premises hardware. So it's a bare metal OS, it runs on certified industry standard OEM servers, it's a specialized host operating system, it's a server core installation, it provides Hyper-V storage spaces direct for software-defined storage, software-defined networking, and it's seen by the workload like Azure. So Azure Stack HCI provides you Azure services in a hyper-converged infrastructure on-premises. To ensure that we have this full hybrid Azure, Azure Stack HCI environment, Azure Stack HCI is natively integrated with Azure. So every Azure Stack HCI cluster is registered with Azure. We will see this in a live demo in one of the later modules where we configure the Azure integration for Azure Stack HCI. It's not necessary that the cluster is connected 24 hours, seven days a week. So it's possible to have some disconnected times. So the Azure Stack HCI cluster can disconnect to be disconnected for minutes, for hours, for days. It expects to be connected to Azure minimum once every 30 days because Azure takes the information about the billing of the Azure Stack HCI cluster from the on-premises hosts. So the on-premises hosts provide the number of cores this is the value the licensing, the payment targets on. The number of physical cores are provided to Azure. If we are disconnected from Azure, every workload keeps up and running. We will never see a downtime for our Azure Stack HCI cluster because we have a disconnectivity from Azure. But if we don't register our cluster in Azure, or if we are disconnected for more than 30 days, then we will have a limitation where we cannot create any new VMs. Our existing VMs keep up and running, our volumes keep up and running, but we cannot create new virtual machines. This is important to understand because we often have the misunderstanding because of this connectivity to Azure that maybe we will some, see some limitations there if we have limited internet connectivity for some time. This is no issue, but Azure Stack HCI is not designed for completely disconnected scenarios. So for the Azure connectivity, for uploading the core information, for um, also technical things like um, update management and using hybrid services, the Azure connectivity is required. So what's the price for this physical course on premises? Because what's interesting, this Azure Stack HCI operating system is provided directly from Microsoft or pre-installed from the OEMs without any upfront costs. So Azure Stack HCI is a highly scalable, hyper-converged infrastructure platform that's perfectly for hybrid services, and we don't have any upfront costs. Azure Stack HCI is built, it's priced per physical CPU core per month. The price is $10 per physical core per month. You can view your country specific prices via the Azure Stack HCI pricing page. Important is that we have 60 days without any additional costs. So we have a 60 days trial after installation. So even if we use the system in production, the first 60 days are free of charge. After this, we have a monthly service fee of $10 per physical core per month. 
it's not the logical CPUs. So if you use hyperthreading in a system with, let's say, 16 physical cores, you will see 32 logical CPUs. For you, the physical cores are relevant, not the logical CPUs. So hyperthreading gives you additional power, gives you, you additional flexibility. Because as you know, you can use hyperthreading to add more um, virtual CPUs to your virtual machines to have advantages in performance and over provisioning. Um, regarding the pricing, we have a focus on the physical cores. Important is also to know at Azure Stack HCI, you are only charged for the active physical cores. Let's imagine you buy a solution with 20 cores in each socket. So you have 40 cores in the server and you have 80 cores in a two node configuration. Maybe you bought this CPU because it had better availability or you plan for some expandability for the future. Remember our module about planning for Azure Stack HCI. When we used the Azure Stack HCI sizer, that we could specify a specific amount of resources for further growth of our cluster. So one way is to keep this further grow resources regarding the CPUs online, then we will pay for it, even if we don't use it. But if we disable these physical CPUs in the firmware or in the um, BIOS of the server, so that the Azure Stack HCI does not see this course and Azure Stack HCI cannot use this course, then we are not charged for this course. Let's imagine my sample where I said I have 20 cores in each socket, 20, uh, sorry, 40 cores in each server, 80 cores in the cluster. If I disable four physical cores on each server uh, socket, I have 16 cores active in the socket, 32 cores active in the server, 64 cores active in the cluster, and now I have 18 cores saved. So I have a reduction of the price, um, a decrease of the price each month by $180. I think this is an interesting and important opportunity to know that you can disable cores from the hardware side. It's not, it doesn't change anything in price in the costs if we don't use the course because Azure Stack HCI sees the course and Azure Stack HCI uploads the physical course that Azure Stack HCI sees to Azure where you have to register your Azure Stack HCI cluster to unlock the full functionality. So changes in the course are also uploaded. So if you activate cores later, because you use the scenario I mentioned where you have some uh, reserve cores for future, further growth, for growth in the future, then you don't break any licensing terms because as soon as you have additional cores, the Azure Stack HCI cluster will upload this information to the Azure portal and you will be charged for this additional course. The price is $10 per physical core per month, but for sure you can also change the number of cores within this month. So the value is typically based of uh, one day. So if you change within a day, maybe Azure Stack HCI will not track this, but in the next day you will have the increased or the reduced amount of cores. This is great because this gives you maximum flexibility. Even if you have some um, spare servers where you want to reduce the capacity in shutting them down, or the usual scenario is to disable unused cores because you plan with the reserve. In the actual situation, we often see shortage of specific CPUs. And if a larger CPU is better available in the market, you can choose for this CPU 
for sure. Maybe you pay more for the CPU, but you don't pay more for the Azure Stack HCI. You only pay for the resources you have active, you are using actively, and you um, have activated from the hardware platform. If you don't know how to configure this, reach out to your hardware vendor. There should be an option to disable cores in each Azure Stack HCI certified solution you get in the market. Important is to know that in this Azure Stack HCI pricing, you have included the operating system, including the hyperconverged infrastructure we learned in the previous versions. You have included the updates to later Azure Stack HCI versions. So all these functionality is in there, newer versions, OS itself, the full HCI stack with all its power, all its functionality, including stretch clustering, but we don't have included in this pricing the Azure Stack HCI VM workloads. In many cases, you build such an Azure Stack HCI cluster to run virtual machines there. If you are running Linux in these virtual machines, you don't have additional licensing costs. In the Hyper-V licensing, virtual machines with Linux never count. But if you run Windows Server in these virtual machines, there are different ways how to ensure that you are licensed for this virtual Windows Server VM workload. Here in this graphic, you can see the different options. A new option is in Azure Stack HCI to use a Windows Server subscription. The activation is handled automatically and in a few minutes I will show you in a short live demo how you can find this Windows Server subscription. Windows Server subscription is ideal if you have a few Windows Server VMs and you don't have any existing Windows Server licenses. If you have already existing Windows Server licenses or if you prefer to buy the Windows Server uh, licenses in the traditional way at your OEM, at your server vendor, you can use a bring your own license. Bring your own license means bring your own existing license to Azure Stack HCI or bring your newly bought Windows Server license to Azure Stack HCI instead of using the Windows Server subscriptions. Both options are available. Both options are configurable in Windows Admin Center. We will see this in a short live demo. When we use the bring your own license, then we have different ways how to activate this. The preferred way is to use automatic virtual machine activation. Automatic virtual machine activation is a technology Microsoft provided to customers starting with Hyper-V in Windows Server 2012 R2 data center. It's only available in the data center edition and automatic virtual machine activation ensures that we can use a generic key inside the virtual machine to activate the VM and the virtual machine checks if this virtual machine is running on a physical host with Windows Server data center as an activated version. Now we are using Azure Stack HCI, so no Windows Server data center edition, but in Azure Stack HCI 21H2, we have a functionality to bring automatic virtual machine activation to Azure Stack HCI. For volume licenses, we can use the key management services. So it's a central activation server to activate servers and clients in the network. And other means, I can activate virtual machines independently via direct activation at Microsoft. So you see, you have the full flexibility here in configuring licenses for virtual machines. 
the important is again to know in the Azure Stack HCI costs, the virtual machine workload is not included. So we have to ensure that we have the usage rights for our virtual Windows Server workload. Let's have a short look at the configuration of this different option I mentioned on the previous slides. What we see here in this live demo is a Windows Admin Center. In one of the later modules, we will go deep into the functionality of this Windows Admin Center. For the activation part, we want to choose the settings at the bottom of the tool lists. On the left hand side, you can see the tools with different tools we will see later in this video series. And at the bottom, we have the settings, the settings for this solution. We are actually looking at an Azure Stack HCI cluster. And in the settings, we will see different sections for cluster Hyper-V settings. And here's a specific settings part for Azure Stack HCI. Let's assume we have already registered our Azure Stack HCI cluster. About this registering, we will also talk in another module. And here we have the option to configure activate Windows Server VMs. Let's check the different options. Here in this cluster, activate Windows Server VMs is actually not configured. This is the reason why I can read here, automatically activate virtual machines, set up the activation options here. Let's click on set up. We can see we have two different options. We have the options to use a subscription via Azure. Or the second option is to apply Windows Server Data Center Edition keys to each server in the cluster. Let's choose the first one. Buy the Windows Server subscription license via Azure. Let's click on this. Go to next. Here we can see I have an Azure subscription I have a resource group and I have total physical cores in this cluster, four physical cores. It's a very small virtual cluster and I can receive additional information about the costs and I can activate the um, licensing via Microsoft Azure. Here via the click of purchase, the purchase will done, be done via Azure. Let's choose the second option. It's an option. You don't have to choose both. You use the Windows Server subscription or use an existing Windows Server license. Let's select the window, use existing Windows Server license and go to next. In my live demo environment here, I have a two node cluster. This means I have two servers that two physical hosts that are relevant for licensing. And here for each physical host, I can enter the data center key I purchased with the OEM license. This is the traditional way that you will choose for the OEM license from your preferred hardware vendor from your OEM. And with each of these licenses, you will receive a data center key and you enter this key here. Inside the virtual machines, you use the generic key for virtual machine activation, for automatic virtual machine activation that Microsoft provides via docs.microsoft.com. So the way how it works is absolutely identical to Hyper-V automatic virtual machine activation we have since Windows Server 2012 R2. The specific thing is that AVMA automatic virtual machine activation is brought to Azure Stack HCI, which is per definition not Windows Server Data Center, it's Azure Stack HCI OS, but via entering these keys here, we can use the automatic virtual machine activation. This is great and gives you the full flexibility in choosing the optimized licensing form, the optimized licensing type for your workload. Because when we compare these two options, these two opportunities, the activation via the subscription is bound to the virtual machines. 
This is great if you move virtual machines around between different Azure Stack HCI clusters where you have no mechanism to ensure that each of these Azure Stack HCI clusters is licensed for virtual machine workload. So you have the full flexibility and you have a way to optimize costs if you only have a few virtual window server VMs. Maybe your most workload is virtual desktop infrastructure, it's containers, it's Linux, and a few window server VMs, then this is great. If you have a host where you have many, many window server VMs, and maybe you have existing window server licenses, or you use the opportunity to use a full featured window server data licensing provided by your OEM, by your server OEM, then you can use acti uh, automatic virtual machine activation based on the data center license keys. The automatic virtual machine activation is bound to the hosts. This means if a virtual machine moves to another host, you have to ensure that there's also a key provided for automatic virtual, virtual machine activation or the virtual machine will show an information that it's not licensed accordingly. Let's have a short look about uh, the licensing of Windows Server itself, because we have heard that the Azure Stack HCI OS is licensed per physical core. The Windows Server operating system is also licensed per physical core, but usually if you think at the OAM license, not based on a subscription, but based on a perpetual license you buy. And this perpetual license has to have minimum 16 cores. This is the base license for Windows Server with 16 cores. Because you have to license minimum 16 cores in each server, you must license minimum 16 cores in each physical server. And you have to ensure that every core is licensed. So if your server has eight cores, you have to license 16. If the server has 10 core, you have to license 16. If your server has 20 cores, you have to license 20 cores. And if your physical server has 40 physical cores, you have to license 40 physical cores. It's similar to the way how it works in Azure Stack HCI because only physical cores are relevant for licensing. So if you activate hyperthreading, what's recommended for Azure Stack HCI, then you see the double amount of logical CPUs, but you don't focus on the logical CPUs for licensing, only the physical cores count. If you disable physical cores, you can reduce your costs for the Azure Stack HCI OS, but not for the number of the physical Windows Server licenses if you use bring your own license. If you have the situation that you choose for Windows Server subscription, then the licensing is also done by the physical cores in the host. But we have the situation there, we only pay for the activated cores. Today, we don't have information about the costs of the Windows Server subscription. So the Windows Server subscription way on the left hand side, the number one here is actually in preview. The option two, bring your own license is already available. Windows Server subscription in preview is not charged, so you can use this without any costs if you want to test the Windows Server subscription. Costs will be provided as soon as the preview ended. Bring your own license is already available. And in the bring your own license scenario, I mentioned the physical cores are relevant for licensing Minimum 16 cores have to be licensed regarding the Windows Server, bring your own license, licensing every core, every active and also every disabled core has to be licensed, but only the physical cores. So let's have a look at some possible Azure Stack HCI scenarios with VM workload. So let's imagine you have Azure Stack HCI 
and only Linux operating systems on this Azure Stack HCI cluster. Then you don't need anything else from Microsoft except the Azure Stack HCI licensing, the Azure Stack HCI subscription with $10 per core per month. If you have a few virtual window servers on this Azure Stack HCI cluster, you can use Azure Stack HCI in combination with Windows Server 2022 standard licensing. It's possible to stack Windows Server 2022 standard licenses to increase the number of virtual usage rights. Maybe you know if you license a host correct with Windows Server 2020 um, to standard, you have two virtual usage rights on this server. If you license all the cores twice, you have four virtual usage rights. And if you license all the physical cores in your host three times, you have six virtual usage rights. If you license the host for data center, you have unlimited virtual usage rights. But in a smaller scenario, it can be an interesting option to use this stacking of standard licenses. If you are running a huge amount of virtual window server, and this means usually 10 or more virtual window servers in an Azure Stack HCI cluster, then it's the cheapest way to use Windows Server 2022 data center. And for sure, you can use the Windows Server 2022 OAM licenses without any limitations. So the OEM license can be used for the Azure Stack HCI clusters to license the virtual workload. Important is that we always license the physical hosts. For some customers, this is difficult to understand because on the physical host, we have no Windows Server installation. On the physical host, we have installed Azure Stack HCI. Windows Server is only in the VMs but we have always the licensing for Windows Server for the physical host. What's interesting when we bring Windows Server workload to Azure Stack HCI is that we have included extended security updates for the Windows Server operating system. I assume you know that the support for Windows Server 2008 already ended because we had the extended support end date in January 2020 and also for Windows Server 2008 R2. The next system where the support will end is Server 2012 and 2012 R2. There we have the support end date in October 2023. So it's in the near future. Now you have to know you can buy extended security updates also for your on-premises servers if you have specific contracts with Microsoft and you have to pay for this extended security updates. If you move your workload to Microsoft Azure, if you migrate your mi workload to Microsoft Azure to the public cloud, you have costs for your workload in Microsoft Azure, but the extended security updates are included for year one, year two, and year three. For Windows Server 2008, we have a specific scenario there we have a year four for extended security updates. If you will not use your workload to Microsoft Azure into the public cloud, Azure Stack HCI is a great new opportunity because I explained to you that Azure Stack HCI is Microsoft Azure. So the workload that is migrated to Azure Stack HCI sees Azure. And this means that you also have extended security updates included on Azure Stack HCI. Yes, you have to pay for your physical cores, $10 per course per month for the Azure Stack HCI OS to get this, to get this Azure functionality. 
You have to ensure that your Windows Server workload is licensed correctly. And to receive extended security updates, you have to use the Windows Server subscription model, or you can choose for bring your own license, but then you need software assurance included for your Windows Server license to ensure that you have this full functionality there. You can add a software assurance to an OAM license. And then you will have this extended security updates for your Windows Server workload on Azure Stack HCI. It's a great opportunity. It's a great um, addition to have this extension here. And it's actually available for Windows Server 2008, 2008 R2, and SQL Server 2008 and 2008 R2. When it comes to the end of support for Windows Server 2012 and 2012 R2, this is also included in the Azure Stack HCI workload. If you bring it to Azure Stack HCI to have this extended security updates here. So keep this in mind, because when we look at the market, then we have many, many unsupported Windows Server operating systems, especially in Germany, where I'm based in, and but also in the rest of the world. And if you migrate this workload to Azure Stack HCI, you get this extended security updates without any additional costs. Let's compare a little bit the different licensing options um, for Azure Stack HCI VM workloads. You can use a bring your own license for Windows Server 2019. It's possible to use this Windows Server 2019 data center license with Azure Stack HCI. Also in the OEM license, we have a downgrade right to previous versions. So we can execute Windows Server 2012, 2012 R2, 2016, 2019. If we want to execute a later version, we need software assurance. We have software assurance, you know this, then you have included the usage rights for later product versions. Windows Server 2022 Azure Edition, it's a data center Azure Edition. The concrete name is Windows Server 2022 Data Center Azure Edition. This also requires software assurance. The Azure Edition is a data center version with additional features. These additional features will be extended in the future. Today, we have three main exclusive Azure Edition features. The first one is hot patching. This means installation of updates with less downtime. We have the SMB over Quick is an ultra fast network transport. And we have extended networking functionality for the connectivity with Microsoft Azure. For sure, if we use the Windows Server 2022, um, bring your own device, uh, sorry, bring your own license, then we can use downgrade rights for previous versions. And we can use in the VMs Windows Server 2022 without any additional subscriptions. But keep in mind that software assurance keeps you additional yeah, usage rights that also bring advantages in this Azure Stack HCI scenario. And keep in mind, you can add the software assurance to an OEM license. So for sure, you can use all these bring your own license scenarios in combination with a volume license. But if you prefer to choose for the OEM license from your preferred hardware vendor, you can use this OEM license in the Azure Stack HCI scenario for activating VM workloads. And with adding the software assurance, you get extended usage rights. The Windows Server subscription provides all these usage rights within the subscription. But as I mentioned before, actually it's in preview, so we don't know the final pricing for this Windows Server subscription option. So we talked about the pricing for Azure Stack HCI itself. 
We discussed the pricing for virtual machine workloads. But we also have more workloads we can run on Azure Stack HCI. For example, Azure Kubernetes Services. Azure Kubernetes Services is available on Azure Stack HCI. And Azure Kubernetes Services is charged per virtual CPU of running worker nodes within your workload clusters. So only running worker nodes within workload clusters. So we take the advantage of cloud-based subscription-based billing where we only license, where we only pay for running workloads. So we don't have to manually um, yeah, configure this running workload. When you start worker nodes, Azure will see this running workload nodes, uh, work nodes loads, and you will be charged for it. And if you shut down the worker nodes, you will not be charged for them any longer. The pricing is $1.33 per vCPU of running worker nodes per day. We have also included a 60-day evaluation period. And the important thing is we are charged for virtual CPU based on the physical cores. This means if we use hyperthreading, we can optimize our costs by reducing the costs with up to 50%. Because as you can see here, we have the double amount of um, yeah, threads available. So in the previous two scenarios, Azure Stick HCI licensing and the licensing of virtual machine workload, we said we are focused on the physical cores. We didn't have costs for hyper-threading, but we also couldn't reduce the costs with hyper-threading. In Azure Kubernetes services, we can reduce the costs with um, active hyper-threading by 50% because we are doubling the amount of virtual CPUs we can use. And here are some examples where we can see with active hyper-threading, we have 50% of the costs we have without active hyper-threading. Here it's also compared to the costs of AKS in Azure because instead of running AKS on premises, AKS is also available in Azure. And we can see the costs in Azure a little bit less than on premises without active hyperthreading. But also from the technical perspective, it would be recommended to activate hyperthreading. So we will get more and more Azure workloads on Azure Stack HCI. For example, Azure Virtual Desktop is available in a public preview on Azure Stack HCI. But as we have seen for the virtual machine workloads, for the container workloads, the Azure Virtual Desktop costs are not included in the Azure Stack HCI operating system because this is a workload we want to provide on Azure Stack HCI. And today, we don't have details about the pricing of Azure Stack HCI, but what Microsoft already said and provided to us that for sure we have the Azure Stack HCI costs. We already know them, $10 per core per month. We have the user access rights for Azure Virtual Desktop. So I need the user access rights to be allowed to access this virtualized desktop. Hopefully you know about the virtual desktop infrastructure licensing requirements. If you license a virtualized client desktop in an BDI scenario, and it doesn't matter if it's Microsoft platform or a third party platform, then you need a virtual desktop access license to be allowed to access this virtualized client desktop with a user workload. And this user access right is requirements are also there with Azure Virtual Desktop on Azure Stack HCI. 
there are different ways to license these um, access rights for the virtual desktop access. And we will have an Azure Virtual Desktop hybrid service fee. This hybrid service fee will be um, calculated based on the virtual C C CPUs, vCPU of Azure Virtual Desktop session hosts. So the virtual machines that provide our Azure Virtual Desktop, we will have later a module where we go into deep details about Azure Virtual Desktop on Azure Stack HCI. They will see how this works. Um, but we don't know what the costs will be for this virtual CPUs for Azure Virtual Desktop session host for Azure Stack HCI. As soon as this information is available from Microsoft, we will also provide this to you with an update of this video. More and more Azure services will come to Azure Stack HCI and they will also have an additional and, and individual pricing because this is the message Microsoft gave to us that we will see more and more Azure services on premises on Azure Stack HCI, but for sure, for most of the Azure services, we have to pay in Microsoft Azure, and we will also have a pricing for these services on Azure Stack HCI.